Okay, so we're going to do a bit of problem solving and it's another minimizing um, of the modulus of Z. And what we're going to do is the exact same question that we've done before. So this is just from up here. I've literally drawn this diagram again and I've taken the equation of the line from the previous part that we've got here. Okay, so I've just copied that now. What it's asked for us to do as something extra is it says, hence, find the least possible value of the modulus of Z. So remember what it's talking about here. This Z this z is any point on the line i'm going to say on the red line because if z is on any of these points it satisfies the equation of modulus of z minus 3 equals the modulus of z plus i but we're now trying to find what is the smallest possible value of the modulus of this blue dot of this z number so let's think because z can be anywhere along this line, the modulus of that of that number is going to be its distance from the origin. So I'm just going to draw a couple of points on as an example. And you can clearly see from these three that this one has got a smaller modulus than this one or this one. And think to yourself, where can you put z along this line here so that its distance to the origin, its modulus, is as small as possible? Well, the place it's going to be is here. And the reason it is going to be there is because when it is here, the distance to the origin and the line are perpendicular. And perpendiculars always create these shortest distances that we've got here. Just if it was a little bit further up, the line is going to be longer than this blue one that we've got here. So what we need to do is we need to find out what is this value so that we can find out the modulus. Now, the way you might like to think about this is thinking about almost like extending this line that we're looking at. And actually, we're going to just have to find the intersection of this line and this line here. If we find the intersection of those two things, then we've got the value of Z. So pretty obvious this line that we've got here has a really really simple equation can you think to yourself what that equation should be that equation is just going to be y equals a third x the reason we know it's a third x is because do you remember we worked out the gradient between these two points earlier on the gradient between these two points was a third and that was perpendicular to this line so the gradient must be a third here plus it's going through the origin so there's going to be nothing extra that's coming alongside it we're going to find out where it intersects with the line y equals minus 3x plus 4. obviously you could just put these onto your simultaneous equation solver on a calculator but this is a pretty easy one to solve because you can just make them equal to each other when you do a third plus 3x you get 10 thirds x equals 4 so 10x equals 12, and so x is 12 over 5, oh, not 12 over 5, 12 over 10, which is 6 over 5. Now, because y is a third of that value, y is a third of x, y is just going to be a third of 6 fifths, which is 2 fifths, meaning that our complex number z is x plus i uh, plus yi, sorry, is this yeah six fifths which is x plus two fifths i so if we want to find out what the smallest value of z is the minimum value of the modulus of z we're just going to do the square root of two fifths squared plus six fifths squared this is where i just prefer typing things in as decimals so we're going to do the square root of two fifths squared plus six fifths squared and we've got the answer 2 root 2 over 5. Oh, I don't like the way that they've done that, actually. Um, but it's 2, they've got root 2 fifths like this. I'm probably going to write that as 2 root 2 over root 5. I'm going to rationalise it. So it's 2 root 10 over 5. Same thing. But your calculator would probably pull that up straight away. So just to think to yourself, if you're ever trying to minimise one of these distances, it's always going to be something to do with perpendicular. Pretty straightforward question here. There are some more complicated ones um, in the exercise. So I would say at this point is a good place to pause, go to exercise 2E and start working through questions 1 to 9.